Praise the Lord. We have a new song for you this morning. And it just says that God, you are a miracle working God. Will you clap your hands right there? Come on. Hallelujah. It's a simple song that says, you are the same God that calls the blind to see. You are the same God that parted the Red Sea. You are the same God that sent your son to save me. And you are the only God who gets the victory. Because you are a miracle working. You are miracle working God. Come on, y'all got it. Tell them you're a miracle working. Say that's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. Sing that again. You are. That he can move mountains out of your way. Hey, yeah. So that's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. This is my favorite part, and it says this healer, provider, hey, protector, a miracle worker. Say healer, healer, provider, provider, protector. Set a miracle work a miracle worker. Set healer, healer, provider, provider, protector, protector. Set a miracle work a miracle work. Sing it again. Yeah! 
Jesus, 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 you're my healer, you're my defender, you're my protector, miracle worker, so the miracle, miracle, so the miracle, 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 you want to open up your mouth. You want to open up your mouth. I'm expecting a miracle. Hello, hello. Good morning. Welcome to Thriving Faith Church. I am Minister Gary. And this is Saturday Morning Talks with God. I am so happy that you came and decided to spend some time with us as we study the Word of God this morning. Hallelujah. We have an amazing topic today, and it is the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Now, I know I can get some amens out there because God has been good to each and every one of us, hasn't he? All we got to do is take a minute and think back and we will see what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. So our topic will be coming from our main scripture of Psalms 23. That's right. That familiar passage has been taught and it has sure been memorized ever since we were children. But we're going to use that as our foundation scripture today. Psalms 23. And also, we will visit with 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. Actually, it will be some more verses as well, but 1 Samuel chapter 30. Put a pen right there because we will be going to that section as well. Amen. So let us pray and we're going to dive right in. Gracious Father, we thank you. We thank you, thank you, thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to sit in your presence, God, and to hear what you have to say to us through your word. For truly your word speaks. And God, we want to know more about you. More about you, God, as we go through this upcoming week, that we can carry your word and hide it in our hearts. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Bless this word. Bless this teaching today. Let your anointings rest heavily upon your word. Let every heart and mind be open to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to us. We forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning, our topic, the goodness of God, is a pretty clear topic. But we're going to discuss very briefly, what does the word good mean to you or goodness? Goodness is the quality or state of being good. Very simple and direct, isn't it? Or another option would be rightness. Another description is uprightness or virtue. So we know that God is an upright God. Hallelujah. And the scripture states that God is good. God is not good. It's not just what he does. It's not just what he does, but it is who he is. Hallelujah. And who he is never changes. He is the same day, today, yesterday, and forever. He is the same God. Hallelujah. So let's call to the stand today. I got a couple of witnesses I want to bring to the stand today to tell you their own personal eye testimony, their eye witness, hallelujah, about the goodness of the Lord, what they've experienced with their own eyes, hallelujah. So we look at King David. King David is the one, of course, that God identified as being a man after his own heart. And he says that, he says that to us in his word that he has found David, the son of Jesse, a man after 
his own heart. And he says about David that he will do everything that I want him to do. So David knew what it was to live in the goodness of God. He knew because this is the same God that had identified him amongst all of his other brothers. This is the one that I want to be anointed to be king. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we look at Psalms 27, verse 13, just as another instance of how David loved God. He says, I would have fainted. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. In the land of the living. He knew God and he knew that God was good. And even though he was going through some trials at that time, he knew the one thing that kept him going was the goodness of God. Hallelujah. So David, with all of the trials that he had gone through, whenever God gave him instructions, David followed those instructions, just as God said that he would. He knew that in a time of trouble, that God would hide him in his pavilion. Hallelujah. Do you remember that scripture? He was hide him in the secret place. Hallelujah. In God, there is a place where the enemy cannot find you. Oh, hallelujah. So in Psalms 33 and 5, again, David, my first witness, he says he loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Amen. So we know that David had a deep love for God. And that's why he penned this main scripture that I mentioned to you, Psalms 23, or oftentimes we'll say the 23rd Psalms. Yes, it is that same one that we learned as a kid. One of the first scriptures that I learned in Sunday school. And I will read it to you from the New Living Translation. Hallelujah. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength and he guides me along right paths. He guides me so that I can bring honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff, they protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Oh, hallelujah. You honor me by anointing my head with oil and my cup runs over with blessings. My cup overflows with blessings. Hallelujah. And then in verse six, glory to God. Surely your goodness and your unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to God. This is the love song or the love poem that David wrote to God. He knew that God would always be there for him, that his unfailing love would pursue him. Hallelujah. All of the days of his life. Well, guess what? You can make that personal. God is pursuing you. That same unfailing love, that relentless love is pursuing you as well. Glory to God. So once I read that scripture, I got hungry for knowing more about it. And pursue became such a, 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 a thing for me. What does he mean pursue? Because when I think of pursuit, you know, it's almost like a boy, you know, chasing after a girl, you know, teenage love. You know, he's going to find her at lunchtime. He's going to find her after school to walk her home and carry her books. Well, at least that's what they used to do a long time ago. Hallelujah. But here's the thing. Pursuing. That's the kind of love God has for us. 
And this is what it means when I looked it up, say pursue means to search for eagerly, to track down, to hunt for someone with relentless abandon, hallelujah, to chase, to pursue ardently and to run after, hallelujah. It is to relentlessly pursue and chase after someone until you hunt them down. Glory to God. That's in a good way though. We don't mean stalking. <laughs> Glory to God. But God, God does not halfway pursue us. His heart is all the way in. It is not a half-hearted effort, but it's a boundless energy and conviction behind the pursuit. So as I continue to study, another witness came to mind. And that witness was when David, David is in 1 Samuel, and he has this experience where he is coming back home with his mighty men, and they find that their wives and their children have been taken, and all of their earthly goods, all of their possessions, the enemy had come in and stolen everything. And so David, because David being the man that he is, he was not only anointed to be a, a king, but he was anointed to be a priest as well. So what he did was he asked for them to bring him the priestly garments and he put on the ephod. And the ephod was what the priests would use when they went into the holies of holies to consult with God. And so this is what David did. And I'm gonna go back a little ways for some, um, into 1 Samuel 30, beginning with verse three. And it says that when David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they could weep no more. David's two wives had been taken as well. And now David was in great danger because all of his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. And they began to talk about stoning him, stoning David. But David, David found strength in the Lord his God. Hallelujah. So understand that these mighty men, they were emotionally overwrought because now their families are gone, their children and their wives. And even though they were overwhelmed with their emotions, David had lost his wife and his children also. So what do you do when you are emotionally overtaxed? These men looked around for somebody to blame. And so they blamed David. Do you look around to look for someone to blame? Or do you look around for the Lord Jesus? Do you look around for God? For help in a time of need? That's what they didn't do, but David did. Hallelujah. David called for the ephod. And he talked to God and he went before God and he inquired. So now we're up to verse eight. David inquired of the Lord asking, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, God answered him, pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Glory to God. Is that good? Is that good? God answered David because again, this is the man that was after his own heart. They had relationship. They had a covenant between them. Hallelujah. And so David, when he asked God what to do and God told him, guess what? God told these mighty men, it says in, in verse 17 that David went with his mighty men. He had 600 men that went with him and David smote the enemy from the twilight evening until the evening of the next day. So that means they fought all day and all night, all evening, all the way to the next evening. And they made sure that not one of them escaped, not one man escaped. And guess what else it says in verse 18? And David, recovered all. 
Hallelujah. David recovered all, just as God said that he would. Hallelujah. Now, David had a reputation, I want you to know. David was considered to be a tactical genius when it came to warfare because David was anointed to win by God. Hallelujah. Are you anointed to win? And if you don't know the answer to that, I'll tell you. Yes, you are. You are anointed to win also. But it requires us keeping our ear to God's heart, keeping our ear to God's mouth. That's the only way that we can know the strategic moves that God would have us to make. Hallelujah. David, the man after God's own heart. He knew what it was to live in the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Now, goodness is God's goodness is represented by his strength, by his steadfastness, and by his love. He says, I will never leave you or forsake you. So the essence of the word unfailing comes from the word kased in the Hebrew, kased. Kassad means that it's a robust kind of love that never fades or falters. This love is completely reliable and constant. This love manifests itself to us with great mercy, with tenderness, with kindness, loyalty, grace, and goodness. That's what God has for you and I. And this love is so strong and steadfast that we don't have to ever worry about being alone because it is an eternal love, a committed, devoted love. Hallelujah. This love is unfailing and absolutely faithful. It is devoted to us, devoted to us, unfailing love. That's the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Regular human beings may say they love you today and they may not love you tomorrow. Hallelujah. Love by man in the natural is predicated on whether or not you are doing the things that they want you to do. That's human nature. But God is not that way. God's love does not depend on whether or not we are being perfect or not. God's love was sent into the world even when we were sinners and weren't even thinking about him. That is the cassette love, unfailing love that seeks us out and pursues us every day of our lives. Oh, that's good to me. To know that God is pursuing us, not just pursuing us, but he is actually overtaking us daily with goodness, with mercy, with love, with kindness, with favor. Hallelujah. That's the kind of love that God wants to bestow on us. Hallelujah. So why does God love us so much? And what is his expectation from us? Micah chapter six, verse eight. And I'll read to you from the new King James version. It says, he has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Hallelujah. That's what God requires of us, that we are to follow the pattern that was left to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gave his life for us. That's the pattern, the unfailing love that he continues to search us out, seek us out, chase us down, just so he can bless us. Hallelujah. Is that good or is that good? Because we know that God said he spoke to Moses face to face. So I want to call Moses as my second witness today. Hallelujah. To take the stand to tell you about the goodness of God. In Exodus 33 and 19, we hear Moses asking God, to show him his glory. And God's response is, 
because of who Moses is in the relationship they had. He says, I'm going to honor that request, but I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. And I'm going to cause my goodness to pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious to. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. This is our God. And he allowed this one man to ask him for this one thing that no one else has ever done. And he says, no man has ever seen my face and live, but I will allow you to see me as I pass by. So in Exodus 34 and verse five, God did just what he said. He says, now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him, meaning Moses, there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. In verse six, and the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. Did you hear that? Abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin. Amen. So God is going before Moses and he's giving him the essence of who he is. This is how you can describe me. I'm slow to anger. I'm abounding in love. I am faithful to you. I always show you forgiveness, but I love justice. This is who I am. So you see, God, it's not that God is just doing good things for you. Good is who he is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So in the hardest moments of your life, you can know for certain that God is with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. And he is chasing you down. He is seeking you out. Hallelujah. So that he can show you his goodness. Glory to God. Know that God is always there for you. He is a good God. He's good today, yesterday, and forever. So we know that David, because of his relationship with God, he was determined that he was going to go before God to get instructions before he went looking for his wife and children. He knew he needed God to direct him. Hallelujah. So we don't want to ever abandon God because he won't abandon us. And no matter how things may look, there is no person, no economic policy, there's no world order, no satanic power, no troubling circumstance, no overwhelming power that can separate you from the love that you found in God and that God has for you. So even when you're troubled or discouraged, even when you're feeling down, even when you are going through a trying period, God's amazing love his grace, his mercy, his kindness, his goodness, they are always right there and available for you. Hallelujah. So be encouraged, be comforted in this one thing that God is always right there waiting for you. He doesn't leave you when things get tough. He actually draws closer to you. You remember the famous painting, The Footsteps in the Sand, right? You see the footsteps and all of a sudden, at first there's two sets and then there's one. And it's plainly stated that that is when God is carrying you. Your footsteps don't even show up anymore because God has you in his hands. Hallelujah. So if we follow the pattern of goodness and mercy that God is showing us, if we're showing that to other people, we can be assured that goodness and mercy will follow us all of the days of our lives. Hallelujah. And we can make that personal. I am assured that God's unfailing love and his goodness are following me 
chasing me down and overtaking me every day of my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So follow the pattern. Imitate Christ as much as it is humanly possible, as much as it is within your power to do. That's all. Whatever you may deficient or be lacking in, Holy Spirit will make up the difference. He's the one that works with us to help us to navigate this life. Hallelujah. And he's always there. We are in relationship with the creator of the universe. And he desires to have intimate fellowship with each and every one of his children. What an amazing and awesome, awesome reality that is. That God, he wants to have time with us. He wants to have fellowship with us. He wants to meet our every need. Hallelujah. We serve a good God. Hallelujah. This good God has all power to do anything and everything. He cannot fail. All he desires is time with you, fellowship with you. Hallelujah. To come alongside you and help you to navigate this life because the next one to come, we shall see him face to face. Hallelujah. And to be known, hallelujah, by him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So know this. His mercy never ends. They're brand new each and every morning. And he causes all things to work out for your good. Even if it's not the outcome you thought, rest assured, it is the best outcome for you. Because God only gives good and perfect gifts. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is what? Good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm glad that you came on and, and joined me this morning. It has been my pleasure to share the word of God with you and know that our two witnesses today who took the stand and gave you an eyewitness account, a firsthand account of the goodness of God Hallelujah, Moses, who knew God as a friend and who saw God's goodness pass before him. Hallelujah. And we also know King David, the one whom God identified as being a man after his own heart, who he could depend on to do everything that he told him to do. Hallelujah, glory to God. These are our witnesses. And you know, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Hallelujah. I just gave you two this morning. Hallelujah. And I pray that they have encouraged your heart. They certainly have encouraged mine. So I encourage you also to come back and join us on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. as we begin our service on YouTube. Thriving Faith Church, 10 a.m. on YouTube for our Sunday morning word. Hallelujah. You are welcome. Join us. Bring a friend. Tell a friend. Hallelujah. And I know that you will be blessed. I can hardly wait to get there myself. Tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. And I'll see you next Saturday at 10 right here on YouTube, on Facebook. Wherever you look for me, I'll be there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But yes, on our Facebook page, and Thriving Faith Church, and also on YouTube. So you have an awesome day. We'll see you then. Go in faith. God loves you, and so do I. Thanks for joining.